We all good? We're all good. Good. All right. Go ahead. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining us, um, all participants. Um, this is a virtual event to help prospective students and current students uh, uh, learn a little bit more about how we are operating our online learning environment here at Grand Rapids Community College. My name is Raynard Ross. I am the Associate Dean for Student Success and Retention. Um, my office is housed on the third floor, room 347. So any current or new students coming to join us um, in the fall, please, um, whenever you're on campus, come back and introduce yourself to myself and uh, Ms. Tony Harrington, who's also joining us um, this afternoon. Um, but again, our purpose is to really try to provide more information to help everyone feel more confident and comfortable about what GRCC is doing to help support your learning in this online environment. Um, and, and part of this today will be a video montage of some uh, perspective of students who have been successful in our online platform. So you heard directly from some students in that regard. After that, we'll have a demonstration of how our online classes are set up via our Blackboard Learning Management System. And Mr. Andrew Rosema, uh, our department head of C computer information systems will lead that demonstration so you can see exactly what you would need to do in operating in our online learning environment. And then we'll have an opportunity for some question and answer with uh, Jason Schuler from our admissions office, uh, Ms. Maria Villardo, one of our academic advisors. And we have a student, Jordan White, who also can give you other insights as far as being a student taking classes online at Grand Rapids Community College. Um, one caveat though, with the weather, we all have experienced some interruptions in power and or internet. So if we do experience that, please forgive us. Obviously that's outside of our control, um, but we're gonna do our best to stay focused and keep you informed and, um, and move this thing forward. So without anything else, here's our video montage to give you some background from a student perspective. Thank you. Overall, it's been a great experience. Um, I had two phenomenal teachers uh, that changed my experience of online learning. These teachers went above and beyond and made videos to get to know the um, professor. You know, you don't put a face with a name if you don't know them. You know, you can go to rateyourprofessor.com or something and hope for a picture and know who you're working with, but otherwise you don't get to know their personality or kind of what they want from you um, as an individual. And I think both my teachers really did that this year. I liked it. I think the professors are very good. Um, you can tell that they have refined their classes um, to make them work. They have stuff due at the end of the week so you can pace yourself. So you can say, I can get assignment one due or done tonight and then have it done for the rest of the week and then work on the rest of them later. I am a single mom to two wonderful girls and I also work full time. It was the best way to get what I needed to get done. Make sure to stay on top of the classwork. Just because it's an online class and you don't see the professor's face every week does not mean that you don't have just as much work, if not more work. Do not wait until the last minute to get stuff done. Definitely do your reading and pay attention to the deadlines. I had a lot of issue with that. Definitely know what's due when. That's a big thing. I would say make sure you check your school email every day and Blackboard. Um, try to stay connected even though you're not on campus. Just try to stay motivated. I had expectations to kind of have an easy semester, but I also had phenomenal teachers this semester that made my online learning a lot easier. But if you're not gonna commit to it and you don't ask around, you don't see the type of class that you're gonna look into, and then you just go into a full force, it's gonna be a lot more than what you expected, I think. Um, maintain a schedule. It's really easy when you're online to say, oh, I'll get to it tomorrow, but then tomorrow comes and you don't feel like doing it. So, you know, kind of make a class setting for myself. Definitely time management is a big, big one and keeping up with every assignment and making sure that everything is ready to go and, and before it's due. Your 
given a little bit more responsibility with an online class in terms of this is the work that's due, you have this long to do it, and you need to find the time to get it done, that doesn't mean that you're flying solo on this. You still have a professor, you still have other classmates that are out there to help you. Great. So um, I would imagine from uh, from those uh, from that commentary, you know, some themes is related to time management. Um, someone uh, mentioned maintaining a schedule. And I think that is an important piece, just understanding that just because a class is online, that you set aside some time to meet your academic responsibilities and uh, utilize your resources. And, um, you know, that's one of the things that we want everyone to understand that our tutoring services are also available online. Um, our advising services are available online, but of course, as the fall approaches, we are phasing in the opportunity for uh, in-person services as well. So again, uh, we are with you um, every step of the way as you continue to move forward with uh, working towards your academic goals. Um, but one other piece real quick I wanna mention, as you begin to select courses for fall, your course descriptions will give you some indication if that class is uh, planning to be an online class, whether there'll be a hybrid method. Hybrid method means there will be partially on campus and partially online, but those details will be in your classes um, as you go to select them, so you know going into it what the expectations are. And also as we move forward um, for the next half an hour or so, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to put those in the chat. We are monitoring that um, throughout the, the event. And as well, there's also uh, a phone number in the program description that if you don't have the chat abilities, you can um, text that phone number or you can always call and leave uh, any, any questions you may have or email or contact information if you have a desire for someone to follow up with you specifically about anything. So again, the chat feature is available um, right now. And as well, that phone number in your description, you can text or call that um, at any time. Um, so, uh, without much further ado, uh, Mr. Uh, Drew Rosema, again, he's our department head for our computer information systems, and frankly, he is also a nationally renowned um, person when it comes to cybersecurity and things of that nature. Uh, so, Drew's going to walk you through a basic demonstration of our Blackboard shell, which uh, is the foundation for any online classes that you will be um, experiencing here at Grand Rapids Community College. Drew? Great. Thank you very much. This is the part where I forget to unmute my microphone and we all stand here looking at me not talking for five minutes, but I think I got it this time. Um, yeah, as, as uh, Reynard mentioned, uh, I am uh, I'm pretty good with the, the computer stuff and the cyber securities, but um, I got that way primarily by being an online student. So um, I have a lot of experience, not only with uh, what it's like to teach online, but uh, what it's like to be a student on the internet. And if I can just impress on you some of the things they said in those videos, that story about uh, responsibility there and time management is huge. So you, you need to either develop those skills or, or nurture them if you are lucky enough to be born with them. I certainly was not. So I want to share my screen with you here and show you what... Um, you're going to see when you go to grcc.edu online. So this is um, our, our front page of our website. If you go to grcc.edu, um, this is what you get. And our website um, is very, very indexed by the Google machine. So if you ever have any questions about anything, we've got a search in here that will help you find things. But also you can just go to your favorite search engine and type in what it is you're looking for. Reynard also mentioned the um, support that is provided to students here in addition to the, the instructor who you will be interacting with in the course. You also have a, a host of support services uh, from counseling to advising to our, our lab uh, support staff who can you know, help you with assignments. They are also available online uh, to assist you remotely. So if you can uh, get into a, a YouTube video like this, if you can do a screen share or a, a Zoom meeting, you've got all the skills you need to, to connect to one of those folks and, and get helped with a class that'll look something like this. 
So that's our main website. If you go to bb.grcc.edu, or if you search for Blackboard, you'll get a something like this. Uh, you probably won't have any courses where you are an instructor. Um, probably not. But I wanted to show you um, the thing you will see when you first start out at GRCC and go to become a online student. Um, you'll be required to take our, our distance learning orientation. So it's we call it an introduction to distance learning. It's kind of to give you an idea of what to expect when you take an online class. So usually the way that works is once you click into that, you'll be presented with this announcements page. And this one is from um, the instructor in this course. I'm using the student preview, as you can see from the, the big bar across the top there. And uh, my instructor, uh, Professor Brand, JD, is uh, instructing me that welcome, this is new to do distance learning. So I'm going to be a diligent student and I'm going to read all the things on the screen. So he sets me up with an idea about what I'm doing, where I should be doing this at, gives me some advice on how to get help if I need to, all of that's good, uh, and then tells me the, the requirements for the outcomes of this course. And if you're required to take this, this could come in handy as we flip through here. Apparently I need to get at least a 70% on the final assignment and then I'll be able to register for an online hybrid course. So that's kind of the crux with this particular course. I won't be able to actually sign up for an online course until I've completed this process. So I'm not gonna be able to register to take my first online class until I, until I go through this and uh, do an online course for myself. So that's the announcements page in here. Next up is the assignment page. And this you'll find this to be the case with most of the way instructors lay out their Blackboard course. It will be something very, very similar to what you see along the side here, where we've got announcements, assignments, uh, contact information, usually some uh, discussion requirements. And then for some reason, the students in my classes are always very concerned about that grades tab. It seems to me that that's very important to them for some reason. It's, like, it's almost like they, that they're single-mindedly focused on how what a grade they get as opposed to the wonderful learning that they're enjoying in these other tabs on this web branch. Um, so this one tells me that uh, I've got an introduction here from the first module and I am going to read every single word on the pages because that's very important. I'm a quick reader though, so I've got through that. Uh, there's a video that I will review and I will take notes on. Also a good idea when you're reading. Uh, we have an overview and you'll notice that on each of these things, as I move through them, there is a button for me to check that lets the instructor know that I have actually completed that uh, assignment. So I click the little button that says Mark reviewed and now it is telling my instructor that yes, I did watch the Google video. And then my instruction, an instructor will go back through the Google Analytics data and discover that no, I only watched the first three minutes of the video and checked the button and then moved on. So I'm gonna know that my instructor can do that and make sure I watch the whole thing. Also, it'll probably be on the test, right? So I should probably take care of that. Um, so I go through and review that. I have a syllabus activity that asks me to learn about the typical syllabus, debunk some common myths. And then once I've done all those things, I can move on to module two. So that's the kind of thing you'll find in the assignment areas. It's, it's not unusual for instructors to have one of those folders a week. Right now during the summer session, we compress our 14 week classes down to seven week classes. So it's not unusual for us to have uh, maybe two of those uh, per week, two of those modules due in a week. Um, so a good practice is to, once those appear, oftentimes instructors set up, so Monday morning those pop into existence and you can look at them, go through and at least peruse them so you can start figuring out what that time management is gonna look like. So I know I've got one module, I've got some videos to watch, I'm gonna take some notes on it. I've got this syllabus activity I have to do. Eh, okay, so I'm gonna set aside some time on Tuesday night that I'm gonna go through and watch the video. I'm going to come back on Wednesday and I'm gonna do the discussion and I am going to complete this course syllabus activity thing. Uh, I could probably squeeze that in on Wednesday. So I, I can game plan my week um, in relation to my class. And, and you can see how that gets complicated if you're taking several classes at the same time. You'll have a bunch of stuff to go through. So there's our assignments area. So the place to start in most courses is at the bottom. 
So you will want to know what the syllabus entails, because that's sort of the contract between the student and the professor. These are the things that the, uh, the professor is requiring of you. And uh, you might not know that the professors understand how to do the memes, but uh, if you've ever seen the Cerveza guy meme, I don't always drink beer, but when I do, that guy. Um, I have seen one that says, and this is not my personal philosophy, but I have seen one that says, I don't always ignore student emails, but when I do, it's because the answer is in the syllabus. And so they get a little salty about this stuff. You might want to, I see Jordan's over there cracking up about that. Uh, they get a little salty when you start emailing about like, uh, hey, um, where can I find out about the student code of conduct? They would reply to your email, I'm sure. But they get a little salty if it's not in the student code of conduct. So here we have a course description, my learning outcomes, what is required of me. Obviously in this introductory course, there's not a lot of that, but you know, in a regular course where there's gonna be a textbook, a lot of my courses require you to sign up for some sort of online lab where you're getting access to computers out in the cloud somewhere. That kind of stuff will be in here. The grading information will be there. Every course will have college policies that we're all required to follow. And then the important stuff, what's required, again, in a normal class as opposed to this um, introductory class, usually there'll be due dates explained in here. In my courses, I like to include a calendar that says folder one is due on Friday the 12th and folder two is Friday the 19th and blah, blah, blah. Um, and then all the things that are gonna be doing, done in there. Gotta get at least a 70 on this one. And then uh, we reserve the right to change the syllabus. Although in this course, like this online course actually takes many 45 minutes if you do it slow. So uh, in this particular case, it would be pretty amazing if the instructors managed to change the syllabus in the 45 minutes between when you got popped into it and when you finished it. But that's it. Um, there's also this resource tab. A lot of times um, that's some kind of technology thing. Again, I mentioned my classes frequently use online labs. Uh, there's a Pearson writing lab that gets used a lot in English classes. There's um, the Alex machine A-L-E-K-S that we use in our math classes. So you'll find links to that kind of stuff that you need in the resource section. Again, students seem to obsess over this part, but uh, this grading thing where we try to provide meaningful feedback on our perception of the students' uh, understanding and retention and mastery of the material as represented by a letter. Uh, that winds up in here. My students are really hung up on those. I don't know why. And then the big thing that's like usually um, a, a, a kind of shock to students new to online learning is that the way we provide the, the sort of freedom and flexibility with your time it, um, and still retaining the sort of student to student interaction and the student to instructor interaction that you have in a real classroom is by the use of discussion forums. So here we've got a discussion board that's talking about vaccination from some biology class somewhere that three people have participated in. Apparently there are no replies, but usually instructors will have a requirement that you participate in one of these every single week. And that in addition to creating a post that you also read everybody's posts and then reply back to them. So, when we're sitting there doing the mental gymnastics of how much time am I going to spend doing this, that, and the other thing, we should include in that uh, the amount of time we're going to have to spend first reading the material so we know how to talk about whatever the subject is, and then the time that it is going to take to reply back to that. So it looks like we've got a bunch of replies in this discussion, actually. And they've provided critiques on these posts for that. So this post demonstrated that the student looked at the videos for the student watch, spoke about specifics, had her own reflections. That means it's a good discussion. So this is a bigger, you'll also see uh, things like uh, instructors will use contact information. Some of us put that in the syllabus, but Raphael looking as dapper as he is in that black tie there had to include that on a separate tab. Um, but that would be how you'd get a hold of your instructor. Good idea to use the um, email links inside of the course. I always like to know what course I am talking about with my students. But essentially that's kind of it. You wash, rinse, and repeat that process um, throughout the weeks, interacting with the material, interacting with your instructor and the fellow students. And 14 weeks later, you're ready to take a very, very high pressure final exam.
no, I'm kidding. The finals aren't always that high pressure in, uh, in online courses. Not all the time, some of the time. But okay, uh, if you have questions, comments, concerns, we're monitoring the chat. It's a little delayed. But with that, I think I will throw it back to uh, my good friend, Reynard, to continue on here. Renard. Uh-oh, did we lose Renard to the storm? No, you did not lose me, oh. um, fortunately. But I think there's just a, a, a lag um, between the two, and but I am here. So thank you very much, though, Drew. Appreciate no um, your uh, your insight and your your feedback there. I think one of the things I want to underscore, uh, as far as what you mentioned, is the interactive piece. Um, again, that classroom discussions do occur in the online platform, and really not only do they occur, but they are still an essential component of our online um, learning. Again, it's not necessarily just a matter of um, not to show my age, but old school correspondence courses where we got to pack it in the mail and did some worksheets and mailed it back. This is definitely a much more robust and, and an engaging um, environment that I think really is more conducive to, to various learning styles as well. So so thank you for, for pointing that out. Um, at this time though, again, we, we do have the chat available. Uh, and I said, we do have some folks available to field any questions that you might have. Uh, we do have, again, a, a student perspective. Um, you saw the video, but we do have Ms. Jordan White able to give you any um, nitty gritty lowdown from a student perspective. And again, Jason Schuler from my admissions office as far as any next steps on moving forward if you choose to today. Uh, Maria Villardo, if you have some questions regarding um, academic advising and transfer and academic plans and things of that nature. And we also have Mr. David DeBoer, who is our di executive director of financial aid, who can um, also fill any questions regarding financial aid and, and FAFSA funding and things of that nature. Uh, Ms. Tony Harrington, she will, uh, be receiving any questions that you may put into the chat or that you may text to the number that is in the description and she will um, uh, get those questions to the appropriate person and they will respond accordingly. But again, if you do have a question that doesn't get answered today or if we need to follow up with you, please um, again email um, or text your email um, via the number that was provided so Tony or whomever else can follow up with you if we don't really get a chance to get what you get you what you need today. So um, I guess, uh, Tony, you go ahead and take over from here. Hi, thanks, Renard. Um, so I am curious about the next step moving forward. Like, how do I how do I begin my journey with GRCC? And I thought maybe Jason could inform us a little bit about the admission process and how that looks. Sure, thanks, Tony. Um, your first step will be after you apply, which you can do on our website. If you just go on our homepage, there's an apply tab right in the middle. So you'll fill out the application for, um, there's still classes available this summer or for the fall semester. Um, once you apply, you'll send us your official high school transcripts or ACT or SAT scores. Um, if you have taken college level courses before, um, you will wanna send us your official college transcript as well. So basically your first step, apply, send us your transcripts and test scores. Um, if you have not taken the SAT or ACT, um, again, on our website, there'll be a, a link and some information of how you take the placement test from home, and that will be through me. Um, my contact information is on the top of our placement testing page website, and so we will set that up for you so you can take it remotely from home. Um, after you complete the assessment test or you send us your uh, transcripts and test scores, um, you will go through online orientation and then meet with your advisor after that. So that's kind of our next steps in a, a quick nutshell. That's great, thanks so much, Jason. Um, and so David DeBoer, you're the director of financial aid. Um, could you inform students a little bit what financial aid is and how they apply for it? Yes, a uh, couple of things. First of all, just financial aid in general is uh, money either from the federal government or state government, sometimes from uh, scholarships at GRCC directly that assist students with paying for their education uh, and expenses like books uh, and other types of supplies. Uh, and to kind of piggyback uh, on what Jason was saying, a student can start the financial aid process while they're also working with Jason and the admissions team uh, for going through the admission and getting scheduled. So a student could start by 
filling out the FAFSA, the, what's called the free application for federal student aid, the federal government form. So FAFSA.gov, we can post that uh, in the comments uh, for people to get access to. But yeah, uh, they would fill out that form. That form would come to us and we would be able to assist the student uh, with reviewing for financial aid eligibility and grants, student loans, whatever's needed to help that student enroll. That's excellent. Thanks so much for the information. Uh, Maria, I'm coming to you next. I'm curious if you could just inform a little bit what an advising appointment looks like in the role of academic advising for students. Great. Uh, advising appointments are about 30 minutes long. Um, you can, right now we're currently having them online um, through Zoom or through a phone appointment. You can schedule those through the Advising Center website. Um, but basically, we're here to help you um, with whatever your needs might be as far as planning your classes for the current semester, um, your whole degree, um, helping you to develop a transfer plan. If you have a question, um, if you're struggling in your classes and you need to know where to get help or what you can do, we're here to help you with that too. So we're really help, um, here to assist you, um, give you the resources you need, uh, help you be successful and make sure that you have the plan that you need and that you're meeting your goals. Great, thanks, Maria. Um, is could you also share? Um, is it important to meet with my advisor regularly? Is this something that I would do just when I'm starting out as a student? I would say you definitely want to. I mean, I would recommend coming in at least once a semester, um, if not more, if that need comes up. Um, definitely, when you are a new student, you definitely want to make sure that you're on track and taking the right classes that you need. Um, it's also very important if you're ever considering changing your schedule, you know, dropping a class, if you're, you know, struggling and you, you know, you want to make any changes to come in and see an advisor first too, before, um, just so you understand the impact of, you know, what is happening with your schedule and how your progress is going. Um, but definitely we're here to help you multiple times a semester, um, but definitely recommend it at least once a semester. Okay. Excellent. Thanks so much, Maria. Um, Jordan, I was hoping you could share with us a little bit um, some tips or tricks you might have to, to being successful while learning online. Um, is there anything you can share with us? Um, I would suggest, um, as this, the video had said, time management for sure is a huge, huge one. Um, I also suggest if there isn't, as far as online goes, if there isn't a um, like a meet and greet that the teacher has put up, I would suggest emailing the teacher and reaching out and introducing yourself, but I haven't ran into that instance before. Um, setting aside a schedule, either like on your phone or writing it down is something that I have, that I have personally used to keep myself on track. Um, also going through everything in your own time on the Blackboard um, in your in in each class, however many you're taking, be it one or three or four, um, hopefully not four because that's a lot. <laughs> but um, going through every tab by yourself and making sure that you're reading everything and downloading the things that you need to, and um, just getting familiar with each class is also important and helps a lot. That's some good advice, Jordan. Thank you so much. Um, Jason, I'm going to come back to you for a moment because I'm curious, uh, how long is my application, if I've been admitted into GRCC, how long is my application good for? Let's say I, I applied to the school a couple years ago and now I'm looking to return. Is that something you could kind of inform us about? Yep. Um, if you've applied once, you will not need to apply again. Um, we will need to get you, uh, we just call it reactivated again with the college and to make sure all your um, contact info, uh, the degree plan you have is all updated. Um, so that will be a call to our enrollment center. Um, we'll get you your student ID number if you don't have it anymore because uh, all that information will be need to be updated in your online center. Um, obviously, if you've attended anywhere else, we'd want your college transcripts from that school too. Uh, so you won't need to reapply, but there is some information that someone from our staff would go over with you. 
about getting um, current with your, again, your contact info, um, your program plans, so what you want to study. Um, and we'd probably get you into advising at that point. So you don't need to reapply, uh, but there are some steps we'd have to go over there, depending on how long it's been um, to get all your stuff set up again, your online center, uh, your Blackboard account, um, and kind of get you reactivated with what might have changed at GRCC since you last attended. Thanks, Jason. Um, David DeBoer, I have a question regarding financial aid. Um, is there, could you share with us some common misconceptions or perhaps um, some of the, the roadblocks that students find to applying for financial aid? Sure, uh, one, of, one of the biggest roadblocks is that sometimes students simply assume they do not qualify. And we really encourage students don't assume that. Go to the federal government website, go to fafsa.gov, fill out the application so that you can get information uh, and so that you know uh, whether or not you will qualify for a federal grant or a state grant. We check all of that behind the scenes for you. All, you, all a student needs to do is fill out the application. We check everything behind the scenes to say, okay, you qualify for this or you qualify for that. And then you get this information and that helps you in your decision-making process as to how you will uh, fund your education. So I think that's probably the biggest misconception is people think it's way too complicated, way too difficult, and I will not qualify anyway. That's a myth. Fill it out and let's see what we can get you qualified for. And then you can make an informed decision. Excellent, that's good advice. Um, I do hear that quite a bit where students believe that they, they won't qualify so they don't try. So that's, that's a great reminder. Um, Mr. Drew Rosema, I'm curious if you have from an instructor perspective, some advice, like maybe something you wish that students knew that you could share with us. Other than my call to arms about please, please, please read everything we give you access to, but definitely the syllabus. I think um, the time management thing is, is huge. I think I heard everybody in that video chime off on it. Jordan just chimed off on it right now. And uh, reflecting back on my time as a full-time uh, employee of a media company working 40 to 60 hours a week and uh, having to do school with a wife who said I wasn't allowed to study till the kids were in bed. I know how like critical it can be to, to setting that time aside, you know, I'm a, I'm a Microsoft Outlook calendar guy myself, but like if you use Google Calendar, if you use a piece of paper, if you just put things in your phone, whatever system you come up with, you know, figure it out and stick to it and, and make sure that you know when you are going to be doing that. The other thing that's kind of helpful too is if you can set aside a space, I know a lot of us don't have that luxury, but um, my wife graciously gave me the uh, basement laundry room to put a computer in. So like, uh, if I turn off this green screen, you're gonna see a dryer. Um, even though it might not be the world's best place, it's like when I'm in here, I know that I'm here to work and like having that separate space is awesome. That's some great advice. Um, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and Maria, I wanted to, to go back to you for a moment and ask, um, if I want to take classes in the fall, when is the best time for me to schedule an advising appointment? Do I have to wait until right before the semester begins? I would say definitely the sooner the better. Um, the closer that you wait um, to have your appointment and to register for classes as it gets closer to the semester starting, the less um, options you might have as far as what is still available to enroll in and your desired preferences for times and days for the classes. Um, but as soon as your you've gone through the admissions process and you're an official matriculated student, um, you can make your advising appointment. So um, the sooner you get that done, the better, um, but we can still help you up until when classes start. That's great, thank you. Um, Jordan, I was wondering if you could share with us a little bit about um, learning online and how how you had to adapt from learning in seat. Um, had you taken online classes before this last semester? And could you just tell us a little bit about what that looks like? 
Um, I'm going to be completely honest. This is my second time attending college. So the first time I, it was all completely NC. I did a bad, I did a bad job with the first time. So the second time um, I took it more seriously and I made sure to in-person classes, I sat up front. The teacher knew my name within the first and second class periods, every single class that I took. So um, I had attempted to start an online class um, this past fall and I was not ready for the expectations that re were required of me for that specific class. Um, but then once COVID-19 happened and then we had to move to online classes, I actually, I think it the first time I tried, it wouldn't have been that bad. So I think I scared myself more. Um, online, it's definitely, if you're an in-person learner, it's not impossible, but there's a lot of requirements of you. If you choose, well, if you're put into a situation where online classes is your is the best option for you to complete that class, um, it's just really important that you have contact with your instructor and make sure to message them or reach out for help as soon as you need it and not waiting until the last minute. That's something that I as a student cannot stress enough. Don't wait until the last minute to ask for help because then you'll be stressing out and it could have been easier from the start if you swallow your pride and just ask for help. Gordon, I think that's some really valuable advice. Um, I think we can all benefit from being reminded that it's okay to ask for help and, and that communication is key, um, especially in, in a remote environment like this. So that was great, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Reynard, I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about um, tutoring services and what's available for students? Yes, uh, most most certainly. Um, you know, I think uh, Jordan's comment actually is a good segue to talk about academic support and tutoring services, because uh, again, uh, we don't want to wait to the last minute. Um, I always sort of say academic support or receiving tutoring support is sort of like um, preventive health care or dental care. Uh, let's not wait till you need a root canal before you go see the dentist. Let's, um, you know, maintain things so you don't have a problem. And that's the same way I see academic support. Uh, we have uh, eight different tutorial labs available, um, obviously on campus, but obviously also available right now online. And on the academic support and tutoring services webpage, there is a link to each individual um, support area where you can drop in to get um, support. The hours are clearly posted there. And at any time within those hours, there's always a tutor, multiple tutors available to, um, to receive you and help you with anything from uh, editing a paper to um, uh, math concerns or um, uh, science. We have a biology tutoring lab, um, calculus and physical sciences. Uh, we have uh, two other math labs for uh, math uh, 98. 97, 98, and 99, and then a math lab for 107 up through 133 or so. And then, um, so we also have a, a ATC um, com open computer tutorial lab. So while you may not necessarily be in a computer class per se, you may need some help in navigating um, the online environment, setting up some things in your online center or whatever the case may be. So even though they support uh, from a um, a content perspective, they support most of the computer information classes. They also do help all students with any basic sort of um, technology needs as far as navigating the different technology platforms that we utilize here at GRCC. Um, we also will be doing some on-campus appointment-based tutoring as, the, um, as things progress. So right now, of course, everything is online, but, um, but we are also navigating how to do some face-to-face -face, um, appointment-based tutoring with obviously limited uh, capacities from a physical perspective. Um, but at the end of the day, all of our tutoring services that are available in our traditional environment are available in our online environment and academic uh, support and tutoring services. If you just Google that on the GRCC website, um, that'll take you to that page and give you more detailed information on how you access um, any and all of those services. So uh, that was a great segue, Jordan. Thank you very much. Just don't wait till the last minute, that's for sure. Maintain things so you don't have a problem is the end of the day. Excellent, thank you.
Um, Jason, did you have anything you wanted to add from an enrollment or admissions perspective? Uh, yes, speaking of last minute, um, you don't wanna wait to the last minute to apply. Now we technically do not have a cutoff date. Um, we are an open enrollment college. Um, so you could apply and still start the week of classes. Uh, we certainly don't recommend that for a couple things. One, a lot of the classes that maybe fit your schedule already picked over. Um, a lot of our online courses do fill up very quickly. Um, and also for financial aid purposes, uh, that needs to be done uh, several weeks out at least before the semester starts. So, um, you know, I know things change. You may have plans for this fall if you decide to go to a, one school and maybe you're looking at GRCC still. Um, it's certainly not too late now, um, but summer goes by quick. Um, I certainly put a lot of thought and decision into it, but you still have time for the fall semester. Um, you could still even get into our summer two session that starts um, the end of June and beginning of July, depending on the course. Uh, but I certainly won't wait much longer for summer and something you want to be working on toward the fall semester if you're looking to start then. Thanks, Tony. Thank you, Jason. Um, David DeBoer, could you tell us a little bit about how um, like time timelines that are involved for financial aid and how people can get uh, questions answered right now is that are you holding virtual visits? Is it on the phone? Yes, to both. <laughs> virtual visits and phone and email. So I guess all three. Uh, four, if you want to say that we have a lot of information on our website. But at this point in time, it's probably best. Give us a call. Uh, give us a call. Uh, uh, the information is on the GRCC website, but the phone number 234-4030. 234-4030, give us a call and we can help you out. Again, you do not have to be an admitted student uh, at the time, you know, give us a call. We will walk you through the financial aid process to help you with any questions about the FAFSA uh, and let you know, as Jason was just saying, as to what the process would be, because it could take a couple of weeks, you know, by the time you complete the FAFSA and the government sends the information, there are some steps involved. Again, we guide you through that. Uh, you don't have to worry about being left alone on that. We will help. Uh, but if you have any questions at any time, give us a call. And you can also set up virtual appointments that uh, is on the GRCC website. Or when you call us, you can request a virtual appointment. We'll schedule one for you. And again, we can do screen shares, all that, just help you in any way we need to, to so that you can uh, get started. Yeah. Excellent, thank you so much. Um, does, does anyone have anything that they'd like to specifically share? Oh, Jordan. Um, something that I um, wasn't aware of going into until now um, as a student, I think it's really important that you know exactly what you're capable of and what your schedule will allow for. So like if you have a part-time job or a full-time job, you probably don't want to be looking at taking four to, four to five classes for a semester if your time doesn't allow it. And it's okay. A lot of people think that they'll go to college and be there for like two semesters or four semesters, whatever their program allows for, but it's okay to be there longer than a projected plan is given. Um, it's definitely something that you wanna keep in mind when enrolling, like how many classes can I, can my time allow for? And don't, don't overwhelm yourself because each class is different. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a great point, Jordan. I just, um wanted to jump in on that because I want to point out that Maria and her team, um, that's something that they also help students with as far as determining what an appropriate workload is. Um, they uh, sit down with a student and take a, a account of the various life factors that everyone experiences, be it work, children, um, you know, just whatever responsibilities a person may have and helps them set up a, a sensible plan, I suppose, and, um, and we're actually a, an academic uh, plan. And um, that's really key because as we, any of us try to move forward and accomplishing anything, it's always sensible to have a plan in place. And that's one of the key things that Maria and the rest of the advising team um, uh, help students um, set, set in motion. So, and once that plan is in place, unless a student decides to make some changes as far as what they're looking to do long-term, 
really that plan can operate almost as a, a roadmap from semester to semester and laying out the courses that um that a person should take and it does provide a projection of how long it will take but to your point jordan um one person's path isn't going to be the same as another person's path again a person who has no outside responsibilities and can devote uh full-time efforts to going to school of course they'll finish a lot quicker. But at the end of the day, we all need to do something that helps us accomplish our individual goals. And it's important for people to realize to measure against themselves and not measure against others. So, so thank you for pointing that out for sure. Um, another thing you pointed out, I guess I wanted to, to reiterate though, is um, uh, you talked about, um, and, and Drew also mentioned, uh, students ensuring that they read through their materials. And you specifically pointed out reading through materials prior to the start of class. And I think that's really key because a lot of times folks are caught by surprise. Um, you know, they may have a particular need or a tool for an assignment that they don't even realize they need it until a couple of days before the assignment is due and then they're scrambling and it really just sets a, sets a bad, uh, sets things, sets a bad precedence if folks aren't, aren't prepared. So, so I just really want to underscore that, particularly in our online environment, because the way the Blackboard piece works, you can read through almost everything in advance, at least to get a sense of what the expectations are. And I just um, implore students to, to definitely take advantage of that for sure. So, um, but other than that, I, I didn't have any other particular comments. Do we have any other questions waiting, Tony? Or are we pretty much all set? There's nobody, nobody's waiting particularly. Um, I was a little curious though, if somebody could um, maybe share some of the, the programs or certifications that GRCC offers that maybe students may not be aware of. I think that so many students um, plan on, on transferring or, or finning the, finishing their associate degree that sometimes it can be surprising to learn that there are opportunities in the culinary field and in music and those I'll areas. Sp I'll, speak, I'll speak briefly to that um, um, because I think one thing um, you're kind of hitting on is some of those hands-on programs that people may have questions about, what are we doing in this online environment with some of those programs that uh, really involves a person doing some things, um, be it culinary, be it auto mechanics, be it um, construction, welding, um, brew, becoming a brew master, um, just a variety of things that really um, involve, um, you know, hands-on work. So we do have um, plans in place to uh, ensure that those sorts of programs like our health field programs and things of that nature, that they do have an on-campus presence um, in the fall. Uh, again, that may be in a hybrid format where the laboratory activities or the hands-on activities are maybe done on campus, but then the um, sort of classroom uh, activities are done uh, in an online um, environment. And obviously the idea behind that is to ensure that when we do have people on campus, that we have them in an environment that is um, as safe as possible. So we don't want to, um, in a sense, have unnecessary activities on campus. So, um, so I guess really the assurance is that uh, those variety of programs that, that are large in our workforce, um, School of Workforce Development, um, again, uh, I mentioned the uh, culinary, um, some of the healthcare, uh, those things uh, that our workforce development will have an on campus presence for those, but also at our MTech centers, we have a variety of certificate programs from welding, electronics, um, again, auto mechanics. Um, there's also, uh, we're introducing truck driving as well, um, construction and uh, HVAC. Um, so just a variety of things that, that, that we have for pretty much, if you have any career goal in mind, GRCC can help you get started pretty much in any career goal you have in mind, be it a goal that requires a four-year degree or a goal that requires a specialized workforce certificate. Um, it's definitely a good place to start. And um, Jason and the rest of the folks in our admissions office can definitely help educate students about the options that are available. And also Maria and her team, once a student decides an option, they can help set up an academic plan to, to get you on the road to accomplishing whatever your goal is. Can I uh, also add to that, um, that once you're a student, um, 
a current student, if you're kind of unclear, um, advisors can help you if you're not certain what you want your career path or what your career goal is. Um, but then we also have career counseling available too and um, online assessments that are available on our website, um, career assessment tools, things like that to help you get started. If you just don't know what direction you wanna go and that's a good place to start. That's a great point. Thank you for adding that. Well, um, I guess, Tony, if, if we don't have any um, questions in the chat waiting, I guess we can maybe begin to wrap this up. I guess so for participants, if you did not get a chance to ask a question or if you have a question that you wanted more of a an individual response to, again, you can uh, text or call the phone number that was in the uh, event description and someone will follow up with you directly to give you whatever you need as far as whatever inquiry you're making. And otherwise, um, if there aren't any closing comments by anyone, I guess I'll thank participants for joining, but I'll give an opportunity any, any closing comments for anyone. Okay, well, thank you very much for all of your help uh, in supporting this event. And thank you for those who tuned in. And again, just keep in mind that we are here to help and um, you know how to get in touch with us and um, looking forward to hearing from you. We're looking forward to be helpful. Thanks a lot for everyone. Take care.